All right. So in this episode, today we're going to talk about why your content isn't converting into clients. So if you are struggling to get clients and you're posting content consistently, but nothing seems to be converting, we're going to talk about how to create content that speaks directly to your audience today. All right, so let's dive on in. And as always, if you guys have any questions, throw them in the comments below. So if you're posting consistently, um, but it's not converting into clients, then that means that there is a major gap in your messaging. So it's time to tweak your content strategy. So we're gonna start with a few small tweaks, and then I'm gonna go over five or seven big tips that I have for um, just figuring out how to, how to actually analyze what's working and what's not working. So the biggest thing you want to understand is how do you help people? All of your content stems from understanding this very, very clearly. What are you doing? What do you do? And I've talked about this in past podcast episodes. I've talked about this in past lives. So if you're struggling to figure out what exactly you do, make sure to go back and listen or watch those episodes. But you need to be very clear and not clever. I think a lot of people get in this space, um, they start marketing, they start posting on social media, and they're like, I'm going to stand out from the crowd by being clever. No, you don't want to do that. Obviously, there is a little bit of cleverness that goes into it, but you really want to be clear. And the best way to understand if your messaging is clear is to put it through the boyfriend slash husband test. So this test is something that I do with my clients. And essentially, it's asking yourself if you had to have your boyfriend or your husband explain what you do, what would they say? What would they say? And I think this is a very good test for a lot of us because as women especially, we tend to overcomplicate the hell out of things. So ask yourself, what would my husband or my boyfriend say about my business? What what would they say that I do? And you don't want to make it any more complicated than that because that is kind of like your, your baseline with um, your messaging, I guess. And going along with that, you want to stop with using advanced vocabulary. So I get it. I know that you're a very smart human being and individual and that you have a lot of expertise and insight, but marketing 101 is to use language that a third grader can understand. You don't want to be using like SAT vocabulary or, you know, PhD vocab for your marketing purposes. Don't try and impress, you know, colleagues or other people in your industry um, by using like super intense words that only a handful of people are going to understand. The person who you help needs to get what you can do in as simple language as possible. So speak as if you're speaking to a third grader, which I know for a lot of us that can be really challenging, especially when you first get started in the space and you're like, oh, I wanna come off as a professional. I wanna come off as someone who like knows my stuff. But I'm telling you right now, once you start using advanced vocab, people are gonna start scrolling fast. They're not gonna understand what you're talking about. And the best way to really hone in on your message is to simplify the living crap out of what you're saying. Um, there's a bunch of different processors like online like websites that you can go on and it will literally you can copy and paste like a paragraph or a few sentences of what you're about to write and you can put it into that processor and it'll like run through it and it'll tell you like what language level you're speaking at and you'll be surprised i wrote a paragraph or i think it was a blog post actually talking about content creation systems and i put it through the processor and it came out as like 12th grade or like 11th it was like high high school language and i'm like oh okay i really need to like simplify some things here and what's really cool is a lot of these like online processors they'll like tell you how to fix the language so like they'll, t they'll highlight certain parts and be like hey this is what you need to fix like go in and tweak this so yeah that is that is a big one is speak with as if you're like talking to a third grader. Stop, don't use the advanced vocab. People are scrolling really, really fast on this app. You don't wanna be bombarding them with, you know, SAT vocabulary or um, just vocab that nobody's really gonna understand except for you and maybe other 
handful of other people in your industry. So the next thing I really want to cover is what is the so that of what you try and do. So people are hiring you to get a result. You know, they they're giving you their money to get a specific result. Um, so every time you make a hook for your content, um, you create a heading for your blog post. I want you to ask yourself, is this cap is this only capturing the homework or am I speaking directly to the desired result? You want to be speaking to the results of what people are going to get from reading through your content. So a good example of this, I have one on my laptop right here. I'm just going to pull it up. So a good example is here's three tips to drink more water. That is very, very simple. There is no like result from that. It's just like, hey, here's more tips to drink water. Instead, a great way to change this would be, here's why not drinking enough water is sabotaging, sabotaging your weight loss goal and what you can do about it. So it's a little, it's more in depth. It, it shows you clearly that here's why doing X, Y, and Z is preventing you from getting to, you know, your desired result. So you're linking the drinking water to the result, which is the weight loss. And that's what you really want to be focusing in on your hooks and on your, your content is having that beginning phrase, which is the, here's why you're not, here's why not drinking enough water. So the, what you're doing wrong is not giving you a specific desired result. And that's what you want to be emulating in all of your content as well. So that's a perfect example of that. And I have a list of a bunch of different hooks. I literally just posted a reel about this as well. So if you want to see 10 of them, you can see 10 of them on that reel. But having a great hook is really going to make the absolute difference in your business. I'm, I'm telling you from this personal experience and from working with like hundreds of clients, having a great hook in your social media content, whether that's on a carousel post or in a short form video or in a blog post or in a YouTube video, whatever it might be, having a very clear hook stating, here's what you're struggling with, you know, and here's how you get the desired result like in a simple, simple sentence is going to really grab a lot of people's attention. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is images. So our brain processes in images. I know a lot of people think differently, like, you know, some people think in like words, some people think in like pictures and stuff like that, but our brain processes everything in images. So when I tell you to think of, let's say a cat, Think of, think of a cat, all right? What really happens in your brain? You're not, you think of an image of a cat, right? You think of like this little tiny orange tabby cat walking around, you know, cute little whiskers, stuff like that. You, you, th you literally visualize a cat. You don't think of the letters C-A-T. You don't think of that. So your message needs to create a specific image in order for your reader's brain to process it. Um, here's a great example of that. Instead of saying like, hey, here's three tips to, you know, release or get rid of anxiety. Say, here's how to stop tossing and turning in bed till 3 a.m. worried about your endless to-do list and actually sleep throughout the night. I'm all about you painted a very clear picture in your head of that same struggle that you've probably had. When you just use the word anxiety, there's no specific image related to that. So your brain just doesn't really care. Like you might know that you have anxiety and you might read that and be like, oh, that's interesting. But that second hook that I said, it really paints a clear specific image so that your brain thinks, oh my God, like this person is stalking me. Like they, they actually know my exact problem. Like. Can I hire you? Like, this is literally what I'm feeling right now. I, I need help with this. So painting a picture is really going to get into your ideal client or customer's head because they're going to scroll past that and say, 
wow, this person really understands my struggles. They really understand my problems. I want to learn more about them. And that's when the whole process of them following you and looking at your links, checking out your highlights, watching your other videos, starting to binge your content. That's when the whole snowball effect starts to take place is because now you're in their head. Does that make sense? So definitely try and paint a more clear, concise picture about what the struggles, what the pain points actually are. So we need more why you content. You're giving educational content and that is great. Educational content is awesome because like everyone starts somewhere, there's always a baseline. But why should we trust you with that content? That is a big, big question you want to be asking yourself when, you know, creating your 30 days of content, whatever it is that you're doing. Like, why should people be trusting you with the content? What have you done in your life that gives you, you know, expertise? You need to, you need to tell them. So one of my favorite, like, frameworks for this is here's how I went from blank, which is a struggle, to blank, which is desired result in blank, which is a time frame. And you want to give content that shows how you embody your work today in the present and how you did X, Y, and Z to get to the desired result that you're currently, you currently have. You want to be storytelling throughout your content. So I hope that helped. Um, that is kind of like the main things that I really want to cover in this episode here is you really need to be painting a picture. You really need to be grabbing people's attention with those hooks. And like I said, the ones that I provide are great for baseline ones. They're great to set up the framework, but you really need to elaborate more on the hooks. You can't just say like, here's three tips to reduce anxiety. Like you need to have like, you know, the feelings, the emotions, um, paint the picture inside someone's head. So you can take the hooks that I provide you, but you need to build off of them and run with it. And I think that's where so many um, business owners get stuck is they see all of these free resources online and they're like, oh, this is how I should be creating content. I'm just going to copy and paste. You can't copy and paste. You cannot copy and paste. You need to add your own story, your own uh, personal twists on it. You need to relate it to your audience. Otherwise, people aren't going to buy from you because you're not going to stand out. All right, so now that we covered how to actually do that, I want to uh, go over a few things that you can do to help analyze what's working and what's not working. So when you're creating content that speaks directly to your audience, there's seven things that I recommend you do in order to figure out, hey, is this post resonating with my target customer? Is this post actually grabbing people onto my social media page? Are they doing website clicks? Um, are they progressing through the sales funnel that I put out? Um, so let's dive into that. Number one is to check your insights. You need to be checking your insights on every single post that you put out there. Um, a big problem I see a lot of, especially social media managers and marketers do, is they overlook the power of insights. They just look at it um, at base level and it's like, oh, this video only got, let's say, 500 views. It didn't perform well in comparison to my other videos. That's not necessarily true. You need to look at the watch time on the video. You need to look at website clicks. You need to look at um, how many times the video was saved, how many times the video was shared, because you could have a video that, or even just a, an Instagram post that goes you know, somewhat viral, it like gets a few thousand views. But if those analytics aren't really tracking with what you are looking for in desired results. If you're looking for um, website clicks and a video that has 500 views has significantly more website clicks than a video with 15,000 views, then you might want to hone in on that style that you created for the video that had 500 views. So really dive into your analytics and see what is actually working. Don't just look at how many people viewed your content or how many people liked your content. There's so many other levels of analytics and data that you want to be looking at so that you can progress your social media strategy because you might post one piece of content that's like, 
let's say talking about the anxiety tips and you set it up in a specific framework but it's not that the it's not that the content itself isn't great it's that the way that you set it up isn't resonating with your your target customer so you want to be taking a different approach and trying new things the the content itself the actual educational piece that's inside of it is probably awesome like i know that you guys are great at what you do but how you're actually grabbing their attention is probably just not there. How you're actually delivering the information is probably just not there. And that's why you need to be checking your insights to see what is working and how can I replicate this moving forward. So that is a very, very important thing that you guys need to be doing. Number two, I covered this earlier, use your language, speak as if you're speaking to a third grader, okay? And use language that is gonna be used in that industry. Number uh, number three, ask your audience questions. Ask your audience questions. I think this is a very over underrated tactic um, and strategy when it comes to trying to figure out what to provide for your ideal customer. Ask your audience questions, you guys. If you're on Instagram, put out a question box. Ask questions. It's as simple as that. Um, you'll be surprised. A lot of people will answer in the language that you should be creating the content for. So that kind of ties back into point two, what I said. Number four is to use call to actions. So I have a few resources on call to actions. If you guys are struggling with this, um, I think I'm actually making a post on it over the next few days. Anyway, use call to actions in your post. Um, I'll list off a few right now. DM me blank, DM me a word, DM me content for link, DM me the word hook for access to my 100 hooks. Tap the link in my bio for more information on. Want to learn more about blank, DM me the word blank. Like those are just three awesome ones that you can use all the time. You wanna be using call to actions though because people aren't gonna know what to do. If people don't know you have an offer or if you have something that you want to share further with them, they're not gonna know about it unless you tell them. So you're gonna tell them specifically what to do. Number five is stalk your followers. Okay, this is where a little bit of like high school dating kind of comes in. You wanna be stalking your followers, you guys. You wanna be stalking the people that come across your page. And I know this sounds like weird when I say it out loud, but it's very true. You wanna be seeing who's actually following you. Are people that are following you actually people? Are they bots? Are they fake accounts of people impersonating other people? Are they from a completely different industry and niche that you never would have expected? Um, are they also educators? Are they average everyday mom and dads? You wanna be figuring out who is actually following you. So when someone like hits that follow button and you get that notification pop up, look and see who they are because they might be someone that you actually end up building a genuine connection with in you know a few hours a few weeks a few months or even a few years down the road so look at who's actually following you number six is to experiment this is another area where i see a lot of business owners starting to slack i guess is they put out a piece of content and if it doesn't perform the way they want it to perform they give up with it and go on to another topic. No, don't do that. You want to be experimenting with multiple other ways on how to deliver that piece of content. If it didn't resonate in an Instagram carousel, try turning it into a short form video. If a hook that you used for the video was didn't really work, try another hook because the content after that five second period could be amazing and could provide some awesome value, but you just didn't grab them in those first five seconds. So try out different ways of presenting your content. Try out different, um, I always say, if you have one piece of content, try 10 other ways to present that piece of content because you'll be really surprised on what performs and what doesn't perform. Um, a great example of this is the whole repurposing strategy. So I made an Instagram story about this the other day, but I made a post on TikTok. Um, it was a quick, maybe like 15 second video, and it only got like 200 views on TikTok. 
and I was kind of surprised about it. I was like, oh, this is weird. Like I thought this was gonna perform a lot better than it did. But then I posted it on Instagram Reels and it got like 5,200 views. And it was really interesting because the strategy that I had used, I thought would perform better on TikTok, but instead it resonated more on Instagram. And what's even wilder is I put it out on YouTube Shorts and it got like 32,000 views or something like that. And significantly less engagement, so less shares, less saves than it did on Instagram. So even though the video had higher views on YouTube Shorts, it technically performed less in my eyes on YouTube Shorts than it did on Instagram Reels. So you wanna be experimenting with all this stuff. You wanna be taking content, cross, you know, cross platform posting. You wanna be trying new hooks. You wanna be trying all sorts of different things with that one piece of content you create. Try it 10 different ways, whether that's putting it on another platform or changing up your lighting, changing up some angles, changing up um, small little things here and there. It's like, it's like running ads. I don't know if anyone on here um, that's listening to this has ever run ads before, but when you're running ads, you always, you wanna be testing one thing at a time, the small little tweaks. So definitely do that with your content as well. And then the last thing, which I kind of covered earlier on in this is creating content for one person. I think, actually I know, <laughs> I know a lot of people who are trying to market themselves on social media create content for the masses. You don't want to be doing that. You, you, want, to be, you want to have your target customer and your um, target audience in mind when you're creating content. And I talk about this a lot in other episodes, other live videos that I have, but you really want to hone in on who your target customer is and what niche you're in, um, because that's really going to help you define your message moving forward. So those are seven tips on creating content that speaks directly to your audience. And if you had any value from this, make sure to leave a comment below. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, send me a DM, but yeah, these are the biggest reasons why your content isn't converting into clients, you guys. And if you need to do a full rewatch of this or re-listen of this, definitely do it. Um, it's definitely jam-packed with a lot of gold tips. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to hear from anyone who has any questions as well. So I'll stay on for a second and see if anyone has any questions. But if nobody has any questions, then I look forward to speaking with you later. Also, before, before I log off, before I forget, I am opening up two one-on-one -on -one private uh, coaching sessions in May. Everything's already filled up for March and April. But if you want to dive into like literally everything that we just talked about, um, you know, posting content consistently, speaking to your ideal client, getting all those gaps kind of tweaked, um, I think the... I'll leave a, a link to the application in the podcast episode as well as in the comments here. So definitely fill that out if you are interested. But yeah, it was great talking with you guys today and I look forward to any questions that you